do you have have Kawhi and Paul George done a good enough job of changing the culture for the Clippers and their fans? Because I don't think they have. But have you? Do you think they've at least made it the culture for the Clippers interesting? Because that team used to be a laughing stock. What do you think about what they've done for the culture of the Clippers? I think they have changed the culture on paper, but like actually on the court, no. Okay. Now they have this new stadium or new arena that they're going to be playing in, right? And the report had came out that the Clippers could actually offer these guys four-year extensions, $220 million. I believe Paul George extension is set option for September. Kawhi's already eligible, I think, for an extension. Then there was talks yesterday, bro, about James Harden destined to come to the Clippers. So you could potentially have James Harden, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Nick Batum, and Zubak at the five as your starting lineup. Is that a championship contender team with James Harden, bro? Oh, yes. It's definitely a championship contending team, but I'm going to, like, I the, it's, it's like a catch-22. Like, if all of those guys stay healthy, <laughs> which is a laugh, which right. I can laugh, it's like a joke. But hypothetically, if they can all stay healthy for a full season and for a full playoffs, I like I would put them. They would I, I would mark them in as Western Conference Finals, possibly NBA Finals. But since I know it's like I know for a fact now that not neither one of those guys are going to last until a Western Conference Finals or a final a NBA Finals. So nah, nah. Let me take that back. Nah. And not only that, bro, in addition to that, didn't we watch James Harden pretty much quit on uh, the Brooklyn Nets with KD and Kyrie because he wasn't really jacking how they was moving? So who's to say that he wouldn't do the same exact thing with the Clippers if he see that those guys are not committed to playing this 82-game stretch? I think he would take the same approach. Bro, I honestly think that he is just getting, he just getting the bag, bro. That's all he wants right now is a bag. He don't care about a championship. He don't care about a legacy. He thinks that his legacy was set once he did what he did in Houston. And he is like, but whether we like it or love it or hate it, James Harden is going to be a Hall of Famer off of just off of the stuff that he's done already individually. James, James Harden accolades is are, are crazy. They, they are through the roof. Like, to see what this guy have accomplished over the years, you're talking about a guy who basically, he was a he was a MVP, what, in 2018? Uh, think, yeah, 2000, see, 2017 or 18. Yeah, he was, a, he was an MVP, I believe, in 2018. James Harden is a three-time scoring champ. Two-time yeah. assist titles, a 10-time All-Star. He was a six-man of the year back in 2012. He was a seven-time All-NBA. He made the first team six times. He was a member of the 75th anniversary team. James Harden is one of two players to be on the top 25 all-time in career points and assists. Accolades is through the roof. But, bro, you have been watching this game of basketball just as much as me. You love this game of basketball just as much as me. What the hell happens when we get to April and May when it comes to James Harden? Well, James Harden, one thing I can say about James Harden is he can make it. He can make it. He can like play a full season and make it to the uh to to the playoffs. I think that he can be healthy enough, even though I really don't trust his hamstrings too much because he's overweight. He's overweight now. But outside of that, it ain't even him though. It's not really him. It's the other two guys, the four, the, the 220 mil a piece dudes, them the dudes that I'm scared of. Right. I can depend on James Harden. I know James Harden's going to come right in and give you 20 and 10. That's off rap. I know he's going to do that. He's going to do that. That's in his, that's, that's in his DNA. He can hoop. He may be overweight, whatever. But Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, when it gets down to the time to act, when it gets to the winning time where the, the wins actually count and you got to get you got to be the first team to 16 wins. I don't trust them two, bro. Not at all, bro. Not I would trust James. Harden. I trust James Harden more than I do with them two. 
And let me tell you why. It's because I know James Harden, even if he stinks it up in the playoffs, I know at least he's going to be available to play. That's a fact. His availability to me hasn't been in question other than when he quits on his guys. We yeah. watch what he did in Houston. We watch what he did in Brooklyn. And then Brooklyn was basically collapsing. So I don't want to, you know, kind of blame him for what happened in Brooklyn. But, you know, he really didn't even give that a real chance. He made sure he found his way up out of there. Now yeah. you kind of got a similar thing in Philly. I feel like he's kind of trying to quit on them. Oh, he's done with Philly. He don't want to be there no more. He don't want to be there no more because that pressure, that pressure, that's what he do. James Harden runs away from pressure. This is why he wants to go. This is why he truly wanted to go back to Houston. But Houston, Emei is not having that, though. Emei don't want him there. So he ain't going back there. He trying to go somewhere where he could possibly win, but he don't care about James Harden is one of those superstars that never really cared about winning. Like for the last, like the, the past, like three years, he don't care about winning. He just want a bag, man. 